guys so I just wanted to jump on and talk to you about something that I've probably mentioned in my videos sorry I have to move a few times now um, it's actually taken me a few months to, to talk about this um, so it's taken me a few months to be able to actually sit here and talk about this um, and I think that's a good thing to, to have to allow yourself time to to grieve and think so obviously we've had a very difficult start to the year with COVID um, so in February my granny passed away um, because of Covid I wasn't able to even give my mum a hug uh, when she came back from Northern Ireland um, then I got Covid pneumonia um, and then our, at the start of January we noticed that our little baby girl Henry at the start of January we noticed that our little baby girl Henry there she is there our little baby girl cap so you guys know that we're on our um, fertility IVF TTC journey for eight years now so in all intents and purposes she has been our baby we've had her since she was a kitten um, yeah so in January we came home from um, a wedding in Scotland we'd been away for the weekend mum had been feeding her and we noticed that she I, I probably noticed maybe a, a couple of weeks before that that, I, that she started drinking more. I just thought it was funny at first. Um, yeah, we came home and noticed that she had markedly lost weight. Her collar had been a little bit loose for a while and she definitely started to be more hungry. But again, we just thought that was her because it was winter. Um, and then it, we clicked everything together and we started to think, hmm, something's not right very quickly over that week of being home we noticed that she wasn't herself at all she was very lethargic sleeping much more all day and sleeping in odd places like hiding almost which is very unusual for her she was always around us very social kitty cat so she's a little black and white short hair and we've had her since she was born um so she was born in 2012 and when they were delivered the mum kind of um the litter she kind of disowned them straight away she didn't want anything to do with them so we kind of had to hand rear her from being a baby um mike brought her upstairs in the middle of the night because she was the last one that was born and she was this little black and white ball of fluff and he was like look it's a baby um and he was so excited and he was just like we were moving into our first married quarter um we were getting married about three months later and we we're moving into our first married quarter and he said, you know, she could be our first pet, she could be our first baby, and if we do, you know, maybe we could have a baby after we have her, like, if we work out to be good parents. So it was a really exciting time and really nice time, and I agreed. And we thought that she was a boy. We took her to a vet, the vet, the original vet, to get her registered type thing and get her initial injections. He said that she was a boy. He just said that there was no boy bits because she was so young. Over the next three months, we realised that no boy bits were developing. <laughs> so we took her back and they, lo and behold, she was a girl. By this point, we had called her Henry. Henry Edward Logan, which then became Henry Edward Poofy Poppy Penelope Logan. Don't ask me why. We're a crazy cat family. We've always been crazy about cats and always have crazy names. My brother's cat is called Chicken. My cat is called Hen, so Hen and Chickens. Um, yeah, so we called her Hen for short, but she had already got so used to being called Henry that it didn't really work. We tried calling her Henrietta, but she didn't like it, so we went back to Hen. Um, and she was just the most beautiful thing, and from day one, oh my lord, was she a daddy's girl. She just loved Mike to bits. She slept on our bed, loads of bad habits, slept on our bed, she followed him around, she used to sit on the sofa with him, she used to wait in the window when he came back from work, and those two were like two peas in a pod. Inseparable, and obviously she loved her mummy, she loved me, but I think, you know, she loved Mike more, <laughs> which is fine. It was a very sweet relationship. 
and she'd been healthy until she was about three or four and then we moved here and one day she couldn't breathe um, so we took her to the vet we thought she'd had a car accident we thought she'd been, been hit by a car and then they did a scan and found out that she had a heart problem she had a problem with the heart valve she also then found out that she had cat asthma feline asthma um, and we were advised to give her a feline inhaler when she was having these attacks at home. And I'm really conflicted now about this, but we did for about four more years. We gave her this inhaler whenever she had bad attacks and she would have them quite frequently on and off, but managed to avoid going back to the vet with these with her inhaler. When we went in January of this year, it turns out that possibly the steroids in that inhaler, although it saved her life and stopped her from having asthma attacks, it looks like those steroids possibly pushed her into having diabetes. So we found out in January that she had diabetes. Very quick trip to the vet. He, you know, tested her bloods and he came back very quickly with a phone call saying Henry's very poorly. Not very well, are you, Henny? You're a bit flat as a pancake, aren't you? Can we take you to the vet? Uh, she's got diabetes. It's quite high, her sugars. Um, they were in, I think it was so high that they couldn't read it. It was well over 36 very very high of course you go through like parent guilt fair baby mama guilt did i do this did i feed her the wrong things did i giving her the inhaler did it not help but i think we've come to peace with that now because if we hadn't given her the inhaler she would have died probably from an asthma attack years ago so it's very difficult so for goodness sake if you're watching this video and your cat's got an inhaler please don't take that on board if you've been advised by a veterinarian to give them an inhaler continue that don't stop you know just because they might get diabetes you know so um he started her on insulin straight away so our lives changed overnight he's like you have to be committed you're going to have to give her insulin twice a day maybe even more you're going to have to test her blood sugars so overnight expense started with the vet bills uh, this is not an ad by the way, but I really want to let you guys know that we were very lucky that we had pet insurance with pet plan um, Because Henry had asthma we had to take out quite a bigger and extended cover for her We got the full cover as much as we could get early on with her and it's always best to register to register your cats with insurance before they're seven I believe so Henry was now eight um, so Really, we had no bother with the insurance at all, especially with the early trips to the vet, they were covered. Um, the initial excess we had to pay and then they were covered. Um, so he gave her the insurance, uh, He gave her, so he gave her the insulin to start with. She came home and we had to very quickly get to grips with insulin, so I'm um, an anaesthetic practitioner, so I'm very used to drawing up with needles and insulin, but I guess if you're not, um, and I didn't actually get around to filming it, with her so apologies about that because I wanted to show you how to do it but it takes a lot of practice and it takes both of you to be really committed um, so our lives changed overnight she needed a different food something with very high protein so you need to take the carbohydrate element out of their diet so we did that so new food there was lots of expense but you know she was worth it um, and she did slowly start to improve he also then discovered that she had a urine infection which is very common with diabetes because the high sugar content in the urine is a perfect breeding ground for bacteria. So he put her on a uh, kitty antibiotic, um, which I believe was like comoxclav, uh, which is like um, amoxicillin basically for kitties. Um, she did pick up an initially and then she went downhill very rapidly. Um, so we took her back to to the vets, Vets for Pets in Gosport, who are amazing. Thank you, Shane. Um, and they said, right, she needs to go to a vet hospital. She's very, very poorly. And we were like, okay. Obviously, our initial thoughts were hen. We want to get her the treatment. But obviously, being human, our thoughts turned to money. 
and uh, yeah, we were very, very concerned about how much it was going to cost and they came back with possibly £2,000 a day. Whoa. So we checked that pet plan, were able to cover the initial visit and basically the vet said then and there, she's, I don't even know if you're going to make it, she's so poorly. She, she literally flopped on the floor and he was like, you may not even get there, but please go now. I don't believe they have um, pet ambulances a lot of the time, so basically we were then faced with having to get in the car with a poorly, poorly kitty and rush, rush, very safely, obviously Mike drove very safely, but rush to uh, the vet hospital, which was Lumbury Park um, Vet Specialists in Alton in Hampshire. And they were amazing. I cannot thank them enough. From start to finish, they were amazing. So, we got her there, rushed her in, and they took her straight into the emergency unit. And they were very honest and said she was very poorly. She stayed in that hospital for about a week, uh, which cost probably about £6,000 in total. Some of it we had to pay out initially, and then that was all paid very quickly by Pet Plan, which was wonderful. Um, which is why I just cannot recommend insurance enough really. It really took a lot of the worries away uh, cause, and, and quite frankly I don't know with us now on one income how we would have afforded it. We wouldn't and she would have had to be put to sleep straight away. Um, they were amazing. They got her on insulin and got her back on track. They got on top of the infection. They found out that she had something very wrong with her liver. She had um, high lipids, lipidosis. Um, hyperlipidosis or hyperlipidemia um, cholangio, cholangi, cholangiitis basically in human terms we would call it um, yeah gallbladder her gallbladder her liver everything in her biliary duct area was inflamed and a problem she didn't have stones so then we had to go through the process of did she have a, a, a liver tumour did she have cancer found out that she didn't luckily um, lots of scans, lots of tests, they shaved her, she was pretty much bold when she came home. Um, and then we went to get her, so I'm going to pop this clip in now, and this was her, she's very, I do warn you, it shows her shaved, she's very young. Hello, um, and she may sound like she's in discomfort, but that is actually how she used to talk to us. She's actually just saying hello. I want to come home. So here she is. Here's Hen when we went to pick her up. Can you say hello to Nanki? Okay though, show Nanki how Bart Simpson you are. Yeah, they shaved you and you've got a little tube. Still gorgeous, aren't you? What did the vet just say? She's everybody's favourite. Yeah. Not surprised. Tell Nanki what's happening. Honey, are you coming home? You're coming home? Okay, so we picked her up and came home from hospital and then the hard work started. So while she was in, because she dropped so much weight and because of the insulin problems, they had put in an esophageal tube into her esophagus, an O-tube as it's called. So it's a little tube that goes into the esophagus and down into the stomach and it's the best way when they're that poorly to give them medication, liquid form, and also feed so she was not eating at that point and because of the other problems she needed a specialised food so we used the Royal Canine Feline Pet Recovery Liquid again not sponsored um, and we had to give it to her six times so basically inject with a syringe six times a day this 30 plus mils of this special fluid that did cost a little bit um, and to get her to put on weight and also we gave her crushed up in a pestle and water her medication mixed it up and gave her her medication that way as well 
which was better than her taking tablets because she had so many to take. Um, and we did that for about three months, all in all. As you can see, I've loosened the collar. So we are going to be uh, filming Henry today with her O-tube. Okay, so we're going to be filming Henry today with her O-tube. So I've just uh, dressed the wound and given it a clean. So I've just loosened the collar and just letting it sort of hang for a second. And I've taken it out of this little loop. And you're going to have your feed, aren't you, Henry? Okay. So to start off with, I've got three syringes. So I'm going to use, stay there, darling. That's it. Good girl. Very slowly, she's very good. Just give them encouragement. Well done, Henry, you're doing so well. And as you can see, she's pretty happy. It's nice and warm, so it's it's just not irritating her. And um, I've just sort of done it up here. And that's Henry had her feet, haven't you, darling? This is the poor little love's diagnosis. So diabetes, she was in diabetic ketoacidosis. Hypovolemia, so she had low volume, dehydration because she'd stopped eating, uh, ketones, um, hyperkalemia, so low potassium, we were giving her potassium supplements, urinary tract infection and possibly an infection in the gallbladder which is very common in diabetic cats, so um, and it's the hyperbilirubinemia and the hepatic lipidosis which is and the cholangiohepatitis which is very specific to cats. We were very lucky, we managed to get her to Lumbury Park Vets in Hampshire in Alton and they took the best care of her as did Vets for Pets in Gosport. Uh, we actually couldn't be happier. So they sent her home with all the medicines that she needs so she's on antibiotics, something for her liver, something to help her appetite um, yeah, two, two drugs for her liver and of course insulin, which I'm going to show you another day. We keep some honey ready, so if we find her in a diabetic crisis we rub that onto her gums. She's had to go on to a pure protein diet and they've also given us... Are you okay there? They've also given us a wound care pack to sort of follow, which is amazing to have the pictures. So if you are looking at, if you're doing uh, O-tube feeding, I'm sure you'll get something like this from your vet. She had another trip back to Lumbury because she wasn't quite better yet. So that was another £3,000. on top um, they got her back she came home on antibiotics because she had a very prolonged UTI infection uh, which again is is usual in diabetic cats that are that severely poorly <sighs> she picked up around VE day and I'm going to show you some pictures and some videos from VE day and she just had the best day with us she celebrated her eighth birthday on the 19th of April, I believe. Oh no, I'm wrong. She celebrated her eighth birthday on the 29th of April and we built, I baked cake. She had um, some diabetic friendly treats and a new toy and a new collar and she was very happy. And then she celebrated Mike's birthday on the 10th of May, which he was very happy that she was here for. And she loved VE Day. So I'm going to show those clips to you now because that's how I like to remember her. That's when I think she was last well and last happy.
So we had that last week with her and uh, shortly after Mike's birthday we noticed that she started to go downhill again very very quickly. Uh, very quickly. Very lethargic again, very tired, hiding, sleeping in corners. Um, the drinking was constant water drinking water constantly and then constant peeing she would still try and go out as much as she could she was having some accidents so we had to get a litter tray uh, but she was still trying to go outside um, not herself her eyes were really dark and she just wasn't herself and you could tell that she wasn't well she started being sick so we took her back to the vets um, on the Sunday morning and actually that morning when she was on the bed with us I woke up and she wasn't with us which was unusual and I went downstairs to find her she'd been very sick and um, she was hiding behind the sofa and she wouldn't come to me um, and I thought she was gonna die there really um, so I brought her up into the bed and I wrapped her in a towel and her blanket and I knew that she was gonna go really and um I woke Mike up and we held her and we cuddled her and we just I didn't want to put her through much more and I just held her and said if you want to go ahead if you want to go now it's okay mummy and daddy will be all right but she didn't um Mike rushed to get ready and uh, we put her in the box and because of shielding I couldn't go and because of coronavirus they had to have an outside he couldn't go in the hospital this time they had to collect her from outside the hospital and I just remember him and her leaving and he said you know he, he said on the way there he, he was singing her songs to her uh, Prince is the most beautiful girl in the world and um, Ho Hey by the Lumineers so many songs that were Henny's songs uh, the fisherman song from the bird, from the advert. Uh, him and her just had so many songs, and he said he was singing to her. She just put her little head down. Um, he came home. And he left her at Lumbury, and um, the vet rang us probably about an hour after Mike had got there, uh, got home, and he said, "As you're aware, she's very, very poorly. The infection is very, very bad now, and." Um, the liver's not looking good and her insulin levels are very bad. Her sugars are off the chart. Um, even though we'd been giving her insulin, giving it right twice a day and we'd been increasing the dose, it wasn't enough to, to stabilise her. And he said, I believe we probably could stabilise her again. However, I have to inform you that it's probably going to be another £12,000. Um, and not that it was motivated by money at all because we would have gone to the ends of the earth for her. <laughs> literally like our child, literally money wouldn't have been an object at all. Um, he said we could probably stabilise her but I have to tell you that because we don't know what's wrong with her liver and it's something obviously catastrophic enough that it's doing this with the diabetes and her pancreas that this another episode is likely and this could keep happening and he said I really believe that looking at her today she's fought all this time but I don't think she wants to fight anymore so I, I really think that she's in pain and that she's had enough But I will leave it up to you to make the decision. And we asked again if there was anything else that they could do or anybody else that we should take to. Is there any other treatments out there that we could do? And he said no. And that she's very poorly but we're rehydrating her and giving her some insulin now. It's up to you. So. So we are. Uh, 
didn't even take very long at all. We just looked at each other and said, it was just instant really, we just looked at each other and I, don't even, I can't even remember if we said it or if it just passed between us, but we just didn't want her to suffer and we said to the vet, you know, um, we don't want her to suffer anymore. Um, we think today should be enough now, we should put her to sleep and um, he agreed. And he said, we can do it tomorrow. And we said, no, I don't want it to be in pain. We'll come down now. And they very kindly said, I know you're shielding, but um, we'll make it safe for you to come. Because I said, I cannot not be there. I have to be there with her. I know people will think that I'm really silly, but like, it did, it did feel like um, a mum and a baby, you know? I really, I needed to be there with her. Like, I was there when she was born, I needed to be there when she went. Okay. Okay, so, so, so sorry for getting emotional, but, um, it's really difficult. Okay, um, so we got in the car and quite quickly I realised I couldn't bear to have anything here. So, and I just wondered with it being, uh, they'd said we'd actually bought a very large stock of the Prozinc uh, insulin um, and the needles because with supply problems with COVID, they said, you know, there would be a problem possibly with the stock, getting them in and supply chain. So we'd bought about six months worth <laughs> so we got all of that together because it needs to be kept in the fridge and I just thought what's the point maybe it can be given to another cat there to help or to an owner that can't afford it or something so we got all that together um, and I took her favourite blanket we got in the car and we drove to Alton and um, we went into a, the most beautiful little room that they use for things like that. It had most beautiful sunny pictures on the wall and a sofa. And uh, they brought her into us. We had to get gowned up with apron and gloves and a mask. And um, they brought her into us. And I heart stopped for a second because where they'd been rehydrating her and giving her insulin she was so much better than she was that morning and I had real second doubts about doing it but I knew that that was just because they'd done that and that the minute that you know but it was nice that she wasn't as poorly as she was that morning she was really perky actually her little eyes were open and she was looking around and she she recognized us as soon as she saw us and she went straight into Mike's arms and um they gave us about an hour and a half with her. And we just held her and sang to her and hugged her and just gave her so much love in that hour. And I really believe that she was okay and that she knew we were saying goodbye. She held on, she didn't want to get down, she held on so close. We wrapped her in her blanket and we sang her her songs we just kept passing her between us and giving her big hugs we took photos and we just told her how much she meant to us just like when a human dies <laughs> it's just exactly the same and how much she meant to us and how much she saved us so I don't know you know you guys know some of our story again we've not been able to have a family for the last eight years and more so what we've been through with Mike getting his injury and being so poorly and with me and mental health problems and anxiety and depression and 
you know, some days we've been so lucky that we've come through it. But she was there that whole time and she, I couldn't have done it without her some days. I really believe that. She was like a little friend, a little steady companion and just so much more than a cat. Um, I'm going to put the videos in next. So these are the videos that we took just before and as you can see her tail is wagging and she's very very happy so um, it was a really nice time. I'm so blessed and so thankful that Lumbry were able to give us that. So here's the next bit. Gorgeous. Hey, Benny. Still wagging your tail. Beautiful. Still wagging your tail, Mummy. <laughs> Mummy loves you. Daddy loves you. Mummy loves you. Daddy loves you. We love you dearly. Love you. Love sweet me. hand. Mummy love you. You're in love with me, my sweet hand. And hand had a fishy. Little fishy. When the board comes in. Dance for your daddy, sing for your mummy, dance for your daddy, sing for your mummy, sing. And then had a fishy, a little dishy, when the board comes in. Mm -hmm. We love you, little lady. Love you, Henny. We always love you, Henny. Henny, Penny, poopy, poopy, manapy. You bad like Could it. you be like the most beautiful girl in the world? Yes, sure. Yes, you are. Love you, Did you see the reason that God paid a hand? Did you be the most beautiful girl in the world? Yes, you are. We love you, Annie, so much. She is a princess. No way, some forever. Give me a kiss on the head. <sighs> um, next. When it was time, the vet came in. So what I'm about to describe is them putting our little girl to sleep. So um, it is distressing. So if you want to turn off now, that's fine. Um, actually, it's not distressing, but if it may trigger something for you. Um, it was actually very peaceful and very lovely. So I'm going to describe it for those who may need be going through it soon. See if it offers them any comfort. Um, the vet came in. She had the drugs on the windowsill ready. And being medical, I asked what they were. I wanted to know that it wasn't going to be anything that was going to cause her any pain. So one was a large anaesthetic and one was a phenobarbitone, which basically um, is an epileptic drug uh, which will minimise consciousness and uh, basically slowly shut down her brain, which will... The anaesthetic will make her go to sleep and it was such large doses that they gave her a massive overdose that basically she she will she will just go to sleep and the brain will shut down which will tell her heart to stop working and her lungs to stop working she'll stop taking a breath her heart will stop beating um once she's asleep and she will just very gently slip away and again i asked her will there be any pain and she said no and having worked in anaesthetics, um, I, un I can understand that because, you know, we've lost people on the table. Um, and I understand how that works. So that was very helpful for, for me, for it to be like that, for it to, to happen that way. So I could medically and get my head around it and that helped me to understand it. So she said, how would you like to do it? So she said, I can do it while you're holding her. So we did, so I held her in my arms and Mike came and hugged us. So he was either in front of us or behind us, I can't remember. So he could look at her and he was touching her other paw. He held of her other paw and I had hold of her. And they just reached out her other paw which already had a cannula in it. And we looked at her and we said, we love you. 
so much, Hen. biggest squeeze and with that she popped a large shot of the medicine into the cannula and she just looked up and just took a breath and she just closed her eyes and it was so beautiful it was the most peaceful death I've ever seen and it was beautiful they did such a good job I'm so happy that it was like that for her. She generally didn't suffer and it was so peaceful she just went to sleep. <laughs> While we were holding her she was warm, she was happy with the people that loved her and that's all any of us could ask for. <laughs> so often it's not that way for humans you know and you wish it could be and um, and that was that. Um, after that she went very floppy um, very quickly um, so I sat down on the sofa with her and we gave her a cuddle for half an hour <laughs> she peed on me uh, which was really funny and lightened the mood because the very first time that I held her she peed on me <laughs> um, and then we wrapped her in, in the towel the blanket and uh, she was gone you could tell that she was gone and we just said you know we've gone over the rainbow bridge they gave us sorry about they gave us about 20 minutes with her and boy did we cry it was such a physical ache such a loss and uh then we wrapped her up and set her down and we said you know over the rainbow bridge is what we've always said in our family I said, you know, we are crazy cat people and we love all animals, but over the rainbow bridge you go, sweet girl, and uh, you'll be with all your family, like great granny who just passed and all the other cats that have gone before. before you and uh, you're gonna have a great time in Devon as we call it rather than heaven you're gonna have a great time in Devon until we meet again till mummy and daddy can be with you um, and then we moved on to a not very nice discussion but necessary on uh, her remains uh, um, we chose I think it was called Silver Haven in Surrey and it was a uh, so we chose to have her cremated because we wanted to bring her home and sprinkle her ashes so we chose them and we went through what box we'd like her to come home in so we chose a little casket so this is our hen this is how we got her back so we left her there so we left her there and we so we had to, to leave uh leave her there which was very hard um we drove home in silence just completely did not believe that it had happened that quickly very very upset um, and she stayed there until it was time a couple of days later to go to the, the crematorium and they came and collected her we opted for an individual cremation because we wanted to make sure that it was just her ashes we got back and I wanted a company that I could be sure would treat her with dignity so I believe it was called Silver Springs or Silver Haven I think Silver Haven I'll look it up and put it at the end for you in Surrey um, and we opted to have her back in a casket 
and you access it by unscrewing the bottom of the casket to get to a, her bag of ashes that were in there. Very light. Um, about a week after maybe two weeks in total after she passed she was cremated and Mike was able to go and pick up her ashes and he sang to her on the car journey on the way home after he picked her up and um, that was really nice getting her home it feels like she's back with us we um, decided to pop her everywhere we could in the house so we made lots of pictures I got this slate made up for the garden and it just says hen our beautiful baby girl, you were our sunshine, 2012 to 2020. That hangs in the garden. I got this little one to hang in the garden. I got this one to go on the windowsill that she used to sit in. Looks really like her and the little front paw is just like her. And we've got a little rainbow um, wind chime to go in the garden. And this little one made to go on the table in the garden. And it just says, Little Lady Logan Hen, forever loved. And they were all from uh, Amazon, I believe. We also got a star named after her, which was Star Registry. And uh, her star is in the Andromeda uh, constellation because we love Harry Potter. Um, and Andromeda was a princess and Michael always used to call her, her princess, his princess so the Andromeda constellation and her star is an extra bright star and it's called Hen's Light Shines Bright and it's somewhere over on that side of the house and we did actually see it uh, during the summer when we were looking it's a very bright star um, and she's, she'll always be our little star and our little sunshine and, and I think all of these little bits actually helped process Having photos of her up helps and having bits in the garden, which she loved the garden, help a lot. We've just finished the garden this summer, um, so we wanted her to still be with us. Um, having her on her windowsill she used to sit on is beautiful. Um, we bought some roses and a new planter, so we bought a rose called Thinking of You, which is a very red rose. I'll put a picture in in a minute. That's her rose, that's Hen's rose. We put a lily in that pot, she used to love the smell of lilies, we used to rub against them. Um, and then we also have the pe pink peony pot, which she used to go and take a little cheeky poopy in. Um, uh, naughty kitty. Um, so we felt that we wanted to sprinkle her ashes in there, so we did that, so I'm gonna pop that in there now. And last but not least, we um, sprinkled her ashes in somewhere very, a place that is very special to me and Mike, uh, which I won't tell you about because it's very personal. Um, but it's uh, it's a place that's very special to us that we probably would like to be sprinkled in ourselves one day. Um, so we're all together, basically. So she's in the pots in the garden, and because uh, we want probably moving house at some point, hopefully in the future soon, we put her in a pot so that we can move her. And we put her in a couple of pots in case anything was to happen to one of them, so or one of them was to die. So she's sprinkled in the garden now, and that was a really therapeutic experience. Um, and not too upsetting at all. We just sang her songs again, and we said a little prayer. Now I talk to her all the time in the garden. <laughs> probably going crazy but I just think of her all the time and I talk to her and I think of her and we've, uh, we've got a little picture in the living room of her as well and one in the bedroom and uh, we're probably going to take her ashes down tonight and sprinkle her in the beach which is um, another place that we would possibly like to be sprinkled and it's where we go for our evening walks so it's somewhere that you know we can think of her there and I know a lot of you will think that this is an awful lot for a cat a pet but each to their own but she was definitely more than a pet to us she was basically like our child and I don't know if we will be able to have a family I don't know if we'll get our miracle 
and our rainbow. I don't know if that will work out anymore. I don't know if it's gonna happen. We're not gonna not we're not gonna stop trying. We're gonna keep hoping, but I'm not getting any younger and when you've been trying for as long as we have for eight years, some days it is really hard to still hope that it will happen. And the ache that you have from it is just too much some days. Um, and she just made that a little bit better all the time. So she was so much more than a pet for us. And our first pet as a married couple and eight years isn't really long enough. Um, but we do have our lovely Tinky girl. Uh, she doesn't like people too much. I'll tell you a lovely story about her. So Tinky, when we moved to this house, um, Tinky is actually Henry's half-sister from a different litter. She's a silver tabby. Uh, she kind of has Bengal in her as well because she's got spots on her tummy and stripes. Most beautiful cat, very different to Hen, very shy, very um, reserved, but very loving, uh, with a very deep meow type Bengal meow. Um, she came to live here, same as Hen, when we moved from our, our previous married quarter. We kept them in for the two weeks we were advised, and she's always a cat that liked to go out, whereas Hen was more of a house cat, only went in the garden. After two weeks, she was just on us to let her, let her out and we did the two weeks and we thought well can't keep her in forever so I opened the cat flap one night the next day we came down and she was gone we searched everywhere we couldn't find her we put up posters we searched and searched and searched no sign and we thought the worst had happened four long years passed and we never gave up hope we uh, you know went to the pet protection league we went to all of the cat uh, groups in and around Hampshire to see if anybody had seen her. She was microchipped, so please do get your cats microchipped, is the moral of the story. Um, she was microchipped, um, but after three years, I remember that one of the ladies saying to us, it's very unlikely after three years on the streets or out there that she's gonna be safe and found and returned to you, so maybe it's time to take her off the list. And we remember saying no, and we just had this really strong feeling that she wasn't dead, that she was okay, that she was gonna be fine. Um, it's really dark, it's just, I started raining. Do apologise. I actually got my light today as well. Um, one November, so two years ago, we got a phone call at work. I was at work in the hospital in the clinic and the lady said, this is the RSPCA and I thought, my heart sank, I thought it was Hen. I thought, oh God, she's had an accident. And she said, no, I'm sorry, this isn't Henry, this is Tinkerbell. And I was like, uh, she said, it is your cat, isn't it? And I said, yeah, she is, but she's been missing for four years, nearly five years. We went, she said, well, she was in an old lady's, we found her a mile up the road from you, in an old lady's house who liked to collect stray cats. Lovely old lady, but she collected stray cats. She had 15 in total locked in the house, so Tinky was probably locked in that house probably for a long time. A good three years, they think, and probably on the streets for the rest of that time. She's very scared now of uh, trainers. She's If we go near her with trainers on she thinks we're gonna kick her. She's very scared of lorries and traffic and traffic noise. Very reserved, very timid. She obviously had quite a lot of trauma while she was there but being locked in with those 15 cats she obviously had to fight for food. So bring her home was not easy because although she was very, we were lucky she was in good condition, um, her and Hen just seemed, although they'd been very close as sisters, they seemed to not recognise each other and they fought a lot um, to the point where Tinky ended up spending a lot of her time in one room under a bed which wasn't ideal. It's just kind of like they forgot that they were family and they knew each other, it was very strange or perhaps in that time Hen had become such an only child cat that she liked all of our attention, we just don't know. But so the, the nice part of the story to finish up is that after Hen passed away sadly 
Tinky started coming out of her shell and she started to come downstairs and she now comes downstairs, she sits with us, she's a different cat completely, she's back to her old self, she comes outside in the garden, She luckily she doesn't go any further than the garden. Um, for a long time we were really worried that she would run away but she hasn't and um, she's been our saving grace, our little bit of back to normal and uh, She's not quite as cuddly as Hen and definitely a different cat, definitely a different relationship, but she's beautiful and she's she's really helped soothe our hearts really and we're so lucky to still have her at the very least. So all is not lost. Um, maybe one day we'll get another black and white cat in tribute to Hen, but for now we're very happy with our, hen, with our Tinky and very happy as our little family is now a three. And we hope that one day we'll get a human baby and our miracle and our rainbow and that we'll be a four. But until then, we're okay. Um, so I just want to finish by paying tribute to this beautiful girl, Henny. Henny Penny. Henny Penny Poopy Poppy. Penelope. Mini Baby Bear. Logan. Uh, Mummy and Daddy loved you more than you will ever know. And you brought us so much sunshine. And that is truly a gift and we'll see you one day soon till then sweetheart you rest in peace and we love you so much always with us in our hearts um and to anybody going through pet loss i'm so sorry for your loss it is the worst thing and when you're going through it you think why do we do this to ourselves i've lost pets in the past and thought i'm never gonna have another one because my heart can't take it and you do you go and get another one because the love that they give you is so worth it and I think it is literally the price that we pay for love We're, you know it's the price we pay for loving them it's the grief that we have to go through when they pass but it's worth it to have them my washing's outside and it's pouring with rain um, I'm so sorry for your loss if you're going through it um, you're not alone and uh, I guess all in all, it was well over £12,000, her medical bill. Thank you so much to Lumbry Park and to in Alton and to Clarice and to Peter and to Ewer and to all the vets and vet staff at Lumbry Park. You gave us some precious extra months with her that made that made it bearable when she passed because we had those memories like her on VE day I'll never forget that it was a beautiful day as a family you gave that to us thank you so if you do have a poorly pet that you want in and you're in the Hampshire area do take them to, to Lumbury because they were amazing and I believe if, it, if she hadn't been so poorly I believe they would have saved her they tried everything and they were very close to doing it she just was too poorly um, if you are feeding your cat with an O-tube I've put a video up Whoa! <laughs> I put a video in uh, up on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's in a playlist under uh, um, Henry the Cat Logan um, and did diabetes, feline diabetes. But on my channel, basically, is a video on how to use an O tube, how to feed using an O tube. Um, I'm sorry I didn't do one to show you how to administer uh, to take blood glucose from cats. I can maybe try that on he on Tinky uh, if we ever need to do that. But um, also having um, I wasn't able to get around to filming how to draw up the needles and stuff but and hopefully Tinky won't get diabetes but there are lots on YouTube so do look um, it's not as hard as you think you can do it it's just a very big commitment you have to give it at the same time every day so you have to be strict when doing it do please get your cats microchipped do please get uh, pet insurance and for us I just can't recommend enough pet plan they they covered everything apart from the excess and a few other things and the only thing they didn't cover at the end was her cremation but you know that's to be expected but all in all it could have been a lot worse and if we hadn't have had insurance we wouldn't have been able to give her the care she needed Mike's just running home in the rain thank you for listening to our story about our beautiful baby girl Henry Logan um, and uh, yeah, the only thing I can just sort of say is please do get them microchipped, please do get pet insurance before they're seven um, and get them regularly checked, get their vaccinations and, uh, and go from there because, you know, you need to give them as much as you would want medically care-wise yourself.
they're our little fur babies and our little you know part of our family aren't they so they deserve the, the same as the rest of us so thanks so much for watching this video guys um, sorry for getting upset but obviously it's a very personal thing to discuss and I just wanted to share it with you because I know you will have watched Hen in videos in the past and I'll pop some more of her at the end of this video so you can see she was just a joy she always loved when I was filming my makeup tutorials to pop up and say hello so uh, you will have seen her I'm sure if you've been here for a while so you've probably been wondering where she is but uh, Tinky won't let me pick her up at the minute to show you but I will try and introduce her in one of my next videos to you guys Hello, Mr. Bond. Hello. Have you been having a sunbathe while we've been at the beach? Have you? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely better in Um, But I'll pop a picture of her in here as well. Thanks so much for watching. Love to you all out there. Big hugs if you're going through pet loss as well. And uh, thanks for all your love and support for everything. And um, if you do want to follow me on Instagram, it's Daniela underscore Logan underscore makeup for makeup and lifestyle and my little crazy life. And if you want to follow me for university or uh, study tube, things like that, and medieval history, it is at university, at medieval underscore university gal, at medieval underscore university gal. Okay, thanks guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!